Praise the Lord, everyone. I welcome you to Friday morning prayer and devotion. This is a great day in the Lord, and I'm so thankful for this privilege that we have to come together in prayer as we go into this weekend full of faith, full of expectation, believing God for great and mighty things in all of our local churches, and we know the Lord has great things planned for us. We have some wonderful praise reports this morning that are going to help us to go into this weekend with that attitude of faith and expectation, and I'm wanting to share those with you here very quickly. Uh, Trevor McMillan's father, we just added to the prayer list just a couple of days ago. His name is Alfred McMillan, and he has just been diagnosed just a couple of days ago, got the terrible news that he had stage four lymphoma. However, prayer was made, and I'm sure not only by this group, but by many others, but prayer was made. He went back to the doctor yesterday for a follow-up biopsy, and the doctor came back very confused uh, to report that he was unexplainably cancer-free. So we give God the praise this morning for that wonderful report for Trevor and his family. Uh, we also can report this morning that there were nine COVID recoveries in Stoddard County yesterday. So we see progress uh, going on there. And of course, every day I report to you as well in our prayer request, the number of new cases. And unfortunately, we have many days where those case numbers are very high, but it seems like that more and more of the cases are milder and shorter lived, as has been our experience in our local church. And so we thank God for that today. Marsha Moore reports that she felt better yesterday than she did the day before. So we celebrate that with her and believing for her continued recovery. Brother and Sister Elkins, um, who we've been praying for, um, he with COVID and she with the flu, are both doing much, much better. And we give God all the praise and glory. Mason Havens, this little child in the nation of Latvia, uh, is much better she has suffered with stomach issues, but Sister Robin Schutz reports that Mason is doing much better. Her brother, Luke Havens, is still very ill and needs a touch from God. As we move into our prayer request this morning, we want to remember him. We want to continue to remember Sister Marcia as she continues to battle anemia and fatigue, feeling some better yesterday, but let's keep praying for her. Kristen Contino's father fell um, a week or so ago. I guess a week ago, and he is still very sore and bruised. He needs our prayers today. Let's continue praying for Jamie Shepherd and uh, for so many of our new people in the church um, who are um, really um, battling during this time of separation, as all of us are. We need to get back into the house of the Lord together, receive encouragement and a touch of healing, whatever that we need. And uh, let's continue to believe for all of our new ones, all of our babes in Christ, and, um, and believe God for great things in their lives. Uh, Missionary Robin Schutz asked that we pray against the unrest in the nation of Belarus, where things are becoming more and more violent. Uh, she also asked that we pray for a peaceful resolution to the conflict between the nations of Armenia, and I'm going to try to pronounce this, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, I'm not sure about that. Maybe someone that's more well-traveled than me can provide the pronunciation, but the Lord knows uh, that conflict there, 300 people have been killed there. Uh, also, Sister Shute's father, who we've been uh, praying for uh, in need of a heart transplant, met with his physicians, the surgeons, about the heart transplant. They told him that, unfortunately, uh, he has a very rare blood type that requires a very, very specific match, and they don't think it would happen any time within the next few years. But we serve a miracle working God. We're going to pray for God's will to be done for Sister Shoot's dad today. Also, we want to pray for all of the COVID-19 requests today here in Stoddard County. Uh, we had another 19 new cases recorded yesterday. We have currently 117 active cases in our county. Tasha Ray and her husband still, to my knowledge, awaiting 
a uh, all clear with their COVID testing to return back to work and Ben Ramey as well. And it seems like it's taken a long, long time to get results back this time and he's needing to go back to work. So let's pray that he would get that uh, result back um, before Monday as this week is already gone. Uh, let's continue praying for Life Point Church and all other churches that have positive cases um, right now and that are struggling against coronavirus and not able to have in-person services. Uh, let's remember Penny Hudson just uh, tested positive for COVID-19 is a member of this prayer group. Susan Bright, Velan Marshall, Pastor Vic Votal, Pastor Stan Gleason and his wife, Sister Lisa Breedlove, Sister Roslyn Austin, Brent Hills, sister and father, Donna Robinson, Kelly Williams, Sally Waller's grandson, Colin, Brother Kevin Prince, Mike Carter, Robert, Pam Bunch and her family, Pastor Mitchell Bland, Curtis Tucker, Jenny Sexton, Brother Stan Cook and his wife Cheryl, and Sister Martha Lewis as well. Let's continue praying for nursing home residents today. So much in need of our prayers as they are isolated. And um, many times the virus is able to get in, but their family is still not able to get in. So let's hold them up in prayer today for encouragement and protection. And um, let's believe God to protect the children at school uh, as well as the teachers, the school bus drivers, and the other staff members. Uh, many physical needs today. Abel Ray, a three-year-old child suffering from PKU disorder. Rick House, type 2 diabetes and heart murmur. Phyllis Robinette has macular degeneration. Emily Stanley has diabetes. Uh, Terry Adams is suffering with IBS. And her grandson, Ethan, needs continued prayers for healing as well. Michael Parrott needs complete healing of Crohn's disease. He's much, much better, but he needs a complete healing and no more flares of that disease. We're praying against Parkinson's disease this morning. My father, my mother-in-law both suffer with that, as does uh, Russ and as does Tim Workman. And I will say I spent some time with my mom and dad uh, just today as they're preparing for their 50th wedding anniversary and uh, just coming up here in about a week and a half and uh, or less, and uh, we were meeting to discuss that, and I was just thinking of how good my dad looked today, and uh, so we're continuing to believe and thanking God for his touch of healing upon him and upon all these that are suffering with Parkinson's today. Uh, let's continue praying for James Pearson, who has high blood pressure. Leslie Pride needs healing, has been chronically ill for quite some time. Rue needs continued prayers today. Uh, Phil and Karen Sampson and their family need healing for Caitlin and for God to intervene in their family issues. Kendra and Robbie today both battling with COPD. Renee has extreme pain and mobility issues because of uh, problems with her hips and knee joints. Bill Eldreth has myasthenia gravis and many other health issues. Elder brother and sister Perkins are always in need of our prayers as they are basically shut in to their home, have not been able to attend church in quite some time. And uh, that can be a very, very, and is a very discouraging situation even for those champions of the faith as they are. But we want to hold them up and believe for God to strengthen them, encourage them, and minister healing to them today. We're praying for continued recovery for Rob Durr, Leslie Cooper, Donna Reedy, Steve Skates, Brantley, uh, Adrian Neely, Ethan Harville, uh, Nick Searcy, Brandy Bryant, Cody Robinette, um, Johnny Ray Hagee, Sylvia Larimore's daughter, Gerald Yeely, Brandon Jolly, uh, Tammy Lawson, Karen Pratt's mother, and Pastor Scott Armstrong. Those who are battling cancer today, Lisa Workman with colon cancer, Versi Gibbs with colon cancer, Linda Fox, cancer of the liver, David Harris battling with cancer. Laura Lay, Caden, Jenna, and Tucker, all children battling uh, the C word today. Kim Gladden, Josh Soberg, Michael Bolin. Michael has stage four uh, lung cancer. Evelyn Marshall, stage three colon cancer. Delbert Bryant, stage four lung cancer. Diane Escher, Dwayne Lewis, a friend of Terry Adams. Ari Bowers, Robert Wicks, Kim Stinson with stage four 
cancer. Wanda Barnes, brother Steve Williford with early stage prostate cancer and has been undergoing treatments for that. And then brother Anthony Trimble, as well as Jamie Dixon with cancer. And now additionally, a new brain tumor has formed. Uh, Terrace friend Beverly and Deb Clydens, all in need of prayer. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a sovereign God. He can step in in a moment's time as he did with Trevor's dad. And we can see that situation turned around in any of these instances. We're praying for spiritual needs today for Jennifer and Brenda's family, for Sylvia's family, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Pam Pulliam's children, Lori Arbo's mother, Peggy Fiedler's children, Jamie Dixon uh, needing salvation, Connor, Haley, Evie, Rose, and Carl needing salvation, Barbara Owens in need of salvation, Carmen da Carmen's daughter Grace needs God's direction and help and strength in her life today, his influence in every part of her life. Beulah's family needs prayer today. Uh, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter Jennifer, we're continuing to pray for her, for Debbie Biddick and for Debbie Biddick's family, her daughter, her niece uh, need prayer. Josiah needs prayer today. Mark and Caitlin, Art Chandler, uh, Tasha's husband and sister, and Terry Adams' children. We need revival in our cities today, from the inner cities all the way out here into the rural areas where there's just about as many cows as there are people. Amen. But God cares about us all wherever that we're at today. And I feel his presence today wanting to move, wanting to draw back those who are separated from him by sin, wanting to help those who are under spiritual attack today by the enemy. Amen. Our God is able. So we're praying for revival. We're praying for a relief from the unrest and division in our society. We want to continue praying for those who are struggling with mental health issues. They're so vulnerable to the attack of the enemy during this time. Let's pray for them. Pray for those who are addicted today to various substances that compromises their thinking and let's and their actions. Let's pray for God's will to be done in our upcoming presidential elections that will chart the course of this nation for the next four years. And the congressional races are so important. The local elections, there's no part of it that is not important and that God is not interested in. We know the solutions are not political, but we do know that God gets involved in politics because the word tells us that he sets up kings and he takes them down, and we're trusting for his will to be done. Other needs today, Terry Adams has serious needs in her family, needs divine intervention. We want to continue to pray for these ladies who are uh, going through pregnancy right now, that they would have safe deliveries of healthy children. Sally has two daughters who are going through pregnancy right now. Uh, Beth Wheatley's granddaughter, Kristen, is expecting and ready to deliver very soon, and that'll be done as a scheduled C-section because of some complications with blood pressure issues. So let's be praying for her. Matt and Michaela Perkins are trying to start a family after having suffered miscarriage and just such disappointment and heartache, and we're believing with them. We're praying for full and complete economic recovery, and we're praying today for our president, our vice president, our Congress, for the decisions they have to make right now in the midst of all that's going on, all the turmoil. They need to come together and make some important decisions for the American people to keep businesses from going under, uh, to prevent further damage to the economy, to help those who are underemployed and unemployed, and we know that, that God is going to move in this situation for what is best for us. God bless you today. Thank you for joining me on this Friday morning. I welcome each and every one of you that have joined us. I encourage you to uh, start a watch party, share this, comment, do something to keep the conversation going today. As we go to the word of the Lord with just one little scripture, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33, and it says, the lot is cast into the lap, but the disposal of it is to the Lord. One version says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. What an interesting scripture uh, for people who, uh, as Christians, uh, most of us anyway, uh, would have a negative view of gambling. But this uh, scripture actually references the casting of lots uh, in this situation and says that 
the disposal of that or what turns out from it is from the Lord. And, you know, there are a lot of superstitions that we have in every society, and they're always rooted, it seems, in misunderstandings um, from long ago. Medieval uh, theologians, for example, argued that since a ladder leaning against a wall forms a triangle, and a triangle was a symbolic reminder of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then anyone who carelessly blundered through that mystical space was risking divine wrath. You probably didn't know that background, did you? And so that's why people began to avoid walking under ladders, lest they incur punishment from God. And on this way of thinking, um, as it became more common, condemned people in England who were about to be hanged, they were actually required to walk under the ladder that stood against the gallows, and that was to clear the superstitious conscience of the executioner. And and so so he wouldn't feel like he was being blamed. It was God who was responsible, or they were responsible because they walked under that ladder and they got what was coming to them. So in that circumstance, you could uh, say that the man was certainly in for a spell of very bad luck very soon when he walked under that ladder. And those harmless words, good luck, uh, that we say to one another function today as just simple, hopeful words of encouragement for someone who's about to face a challenge. But the Bible teaches that there's really no such thing as luck. And if I could just mention as an aside, I feel like I'm taking a little more time today than I should, but uh, let me just get it out of my system. Uh, when I was just a child, uh, the pastor of the church we were going to got up and preached a message, and he preached a message against the idea of luck. He said, there's no such thing as luck. It's the blessings of God, or it's um, uh, maybe evil that's come against your life, but there is no chance, and there is no luck. And after he concluded the message, a lady in the church gave a message in tongues, and the interpretation came forth. And when the interpretation was given, the person said, thus saith the Lord, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> I, I've never forgotten that. Even as a child, that was just such a humorous thing. And of course, we know that uh, a message from God would not contradict a word from God that's spoken in another way. So I don't know who missed it that day, whether it was the person that was trying to be used of the Spirit in the gifts or if it was the pastor. But nevertheless, uh, we don't need to rely on meaningless superstition, fortune, or luck. Um, every outcome in our life, I believe this, is determined by God beforehand. I don't believe that God has a plan B for our lives. God has his plan. And sometimes we make bad decisions and we walk under ladders of our own making. We, we get ourselves off track, so to speak. Um, but it's, uh, it's not the inanimate object. It's not others. It's not uh, situations, perhaps. Uh, but it's our decision of whether we are going to purpose to stay in the will of God or not that makes the difference. And what God has to do is somehow get us to get back into his plan. So it's not plan B. God has the plan, and we get to make the decision every day of whether we're going to be a part of his plan. And so I want you to understand today that just put your trust fully in the sovereign plan of God to work everything out for our good. I know that I harp on this so many times, but Romans 8, 28 is such a powerful revelation if you'll just allow yourself to receive it. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Little things, big things, ugly things, pretty things, skinny things, heavy things. It doesn't matter what it is or who it is. It meant all things by God's design. The enemy cannot do anything against you without doing something for you as long as you are submitted to the plan of God. And so today we're going to pray and we're going to submit our will to God. In doing that, we acknowledge his plan and we acknowledge that the enemy and circumstance has no control over us today. I feel the power of God here today. I hope that you feel what I'm feeling as we go to prayer. Lord Jesus, we trust completely in you. We make that decision today. Lord, just to walk hand in hand with you 
through whatever circumstance, through whatever uh, depressing uh, event uh, against whatever attack, Lord, whatever that it is, uh, we choose to walk with you today. And we submit our needs to you, not out of a ritual or not just out of a, a wish list, but we understand that you are the sovereign God and you are able to do something about each of these situations. So we give you glory right now. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, you are so worthy. You are so awesome. We thank you for the praise reports. We thank you for healing from cancer. If you did it for one, and we know you did, you'll do it for another. And so we bring every cancer diagnosis today and lay it before your feet. We believe for healing for every person that's on this list. As the prayer warriors are calling out these names that they see posted on this video today, God, I believe, Lord, that miracles are being worked in their lives right now. In Jesus' name, we bring COVID-19 and we toss it down before your throne. Oh, God, we give you glory because we know you've already conquered every sickness and disease. We know that you took the very keys of death and hell away from the enemy. He doesn't even have the keys to his own house. You nailed every sickness and disease to your cross. And when your body came down from that cross, those those sins and those iniquities and those failures and those sicknesses and diseases that were a result of sin that came into the world, they were nailed there and, and they were transfixed there, Lord, uh, uh, according to your divine power and to show your authority over them. Hallelujah. When you came out of the grave, Lord, uh, you showed us that you have power and to put all things uh, under your feet. We give you the praise. We believe for healing of COVID today for every person on this list. We believe today, God, for healing of the body today for Luke Havens and for Marsha Moore, for Kristen's father in Jesus' name, for Jamie Shepherd, whatever her need is today, whether it's physical, Lord, whether it's emotional, whatever that it is today, minister in her life. We pray, God, for the nation of Belarus today against the unrest that's there. We pray against the unrest in our own nation today. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would move in, that revival would move in and change people's hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, we pray for these two nations, Armenia and Azerbaijan, that are, that are fighting against one another. We pray, God, that you would uh, bring an end to that violence. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for Sister Schutz, uh, uh, Father, today, God, uh, we pray that you would work this situation out in his need for a heart transplant. Oh, God, give the doctors wisdom. Give direction. Let there be the right donor or with the right blood type in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory for what you're doing, Lord. We pray for every uh, nursing home resident today, every shut-in. We pray, God, for Brother and Sister Perkins, Lord, that you would strengthen and minister your healing and encouragement to them today. We pray your protection for the children at school uh, Lord, uh, as they're uh, in the situation there where there's much exposure to coronavirus on a daily basis, protect the teachers uh, and the school bus drivers and the staff members. Uh, we pray that virus will not be spread from home to home. In Jesus' name, we pray for Abel today, God, for his healing of PKU. We lift up Rick House, uh, Lord, believing for healing of his body of type 2 diabetes and heart murmur. We pray for Phyllis Robinette, that she would receive healing for her eyes right now. We pray for Aunt Emily Stanley today for healing of diabetes. Uh, we pray for Terry Adams, Lord, for her healing touch uh, to be received even now by faith. Uh, we pray for Ethan today for his healing. We pray for healing of Crohn's disease, uh, Lord, for all those who suffer with that and for Michael Parrott today, we pray against Parkinson's, uh, believing, Lord, for complete reversal for my father, for my mother-in-law, for Russ, uh, for Tim Workman. Uh, in Jesus' name, we believe for healing for Leslie and for Rue and for Caitlin. Uh, we believe for your intervention in Phil and Karen Sampson's family today. We believe for healing of the lungs for Kendra and Robbie right now. We believe for healing of the joints for Renee, God. Let every joint and her body be released from pain in Jesus name we pray for healing for Bill Eldreth today in the mighty name of Jesus we believe for continued recovery for all these who have suffered strokes Lord these who are recovering from major surgeries Lord 
these God who have been in accidents of various kinds, these who have had traumatic brain injury, Lord, whatever that it is, it's, there's nothing that is too hard for you. And we believe for your healing, Lord, to take place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for every spiritual need. We lift up uh, every family member today. Oh God, we lift up, Lord, uh, every backslider, um, believing God for their spiritual healing today. Lord, for those who have never known you, we pray, God, they would be drawn to you by your spirit. Uh, let your spirit woo them and draw them. God, take their sleep from them at night, uh, Lord, in the quietness when everything else they've occupied their minds with is been taken away and there's that stillness there let your still small voice speak to them and draw them lord by your spirit in jesus name in jesus name oh god touch those that are mentally ill today those who are who are suffering with issues in their mind today oppression and depression and bipolar disorder, God, anxiety, all these different disorder, disorders, uh, Lord, that affect people today. We believe for your healing today in Jesus' name. We pray for your will to be done in our upcoming elections, God. Give us direction. Give our nation direction, Lord, that the course would go according to your will over this next four-year term. We pray, God, for Sister Adams' uh, needs in her family, Lord, that you would intervene. We pray for these ladies, God, who are going through pregnancy right now. We're believing for safe deliveries of healthy children. Lord, for Sally's daughters today, for for Beth's granddaughter, Kristen, today. God, be with her, Lord, as she goes for that C-section soon and protect her and that unborn child. We believe, Lord, for Matt and Michaela, God, that they're going to have that joy of, of a child in their life. Uh, in Jesus' name, we pray, God, for our economy, and we believe you to heal our land today. We pray for our president, for the administration that's working, God, uh, right now, Lord, uh, to bring about things that need to happen. We pray for our vice president, for our Congress, that all the negotiations that are going on with regard to stimulus and, and help for failing companies uh, in the middle of this pandemic, Lord, that those negotiations would not fail. Lord, let personal preference be put aside and let somehow them come together to accomplish something. Lord, in Jesus' name, we give you praise for all things today, and we thank you for your touch. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord, and all of our needs. Lord, you're the one that deserves the glory and the honor, and you're the one who will perform the work. And we give you glory and praise for all that you're doing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me again today. We'll be back Monday morning, good Lord willing, ready to tackle this um, necessary enterprise of prayer once again together, corporate prayer, unifying to see needs met around the world. I'll see you Monday morning at 7.30.